In this video, I'm off in the caravan again, and today I'm at Filey, at Primrose Valley Caravan Park, and I brought my AM1 Mark I and my trusty Lumix 12 to 60. Let's see what we can get from these. Roll titles. <laughs> Well hi YouTube, Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy with you once again. Doing a little bit of a, a wander with my uh, with my camera along here. I'm just on the coastline uh, beside Filey at um, Primrose Valley Caravan Park, which is a, a Haven Holidays Caravan Park. And um, I've just come down to the beach. We just watched the coronation of King Charles III on TV this morning. And it looks like our weather here is somewhat better than the weather that he's had down there. So, uh, just have a little scan around. So let's see what we can do. I've got my EM1 Mark I with me, which I haven't used for ages. And uh, I'm gonna see how that fits in since I haven't used it for a while. I've been using more modern cameras than this to see if I can still enjoy using it. And of course, I've got my favorite Lumix 12 to 60. Again, a lens I haven't used for a good few months now. So I'm gonna see how I get on with them and um, take some photos just for the fun of it while I'm here at, uh, at Filey. But one of the opportunities of being an oldie like me is that you get the, you get the chance to, um, to live your life a little bit more like how you'd want to so I can get around the place where I used to be stuck in a seven day a week job or a five day a week job. I can now spend some time coming away and it's great because you can get into places like this in the caravan sites, um, on the beaches, the northeast of England, uh, all the way up to um, Scotland, in fact all the way around the top of Scotland, I've got the most glorious beaches of golden sand, a white sand. And if you haven't been up this area, it is really worth coming to. They're very, very good, very, very clean generally. Obviously you've got a little bit of rubbish that you get on any beach, but um, generally these are pretty good, well looked after beaches all the way up from, well, from Humber all the way around to the top of Scotland. So if you haven't been to, into this area, it's well worth coming. But the differences that we have on this beach compared to say Brora when I was in Scotland last year, it's just the number of people on the beach. Last year, I think there was just two of us, that was Sue and I, plus the two dogs, of course. But this, although it's not a crowded beach, it is quite well populated and um, it's active. It's, it's, quite, it's quite enjoyable, but um, there are certainly more people down here than there was in Scotland last year. Now, beaches and photography always make me worry a little bit because um, I come from the old school where you had cameras which had uh, all mechanical parts in and the idea of getting any grains of sand uh, either blown into the camera or picked up because you dropped the camera or something really used to frighten me but um, they seem to be an awful lot more resistant these days the weatherproofing is a lot better I'm still very very careful though when I put it onto a sandy beach and I'm always very very careful to wipe it down before I put it back into the bag to make sure any grains of sand are removed so they can't get brought into the mechanisms now the other thing about this particular sandy beach is it's May and <laughs> it's cold last time I was on a sandy beach was um, Paphos in Cyprus and the weather there was about 23, 24 degrees. So I'm feeling the temperature at the moment. It's quite windy. It's been windy for the last couple of days, but this is dry at the moment and tolerable. But uh, I'll give you a quick scan around the beach and let you see about, I'll zoom you in slightly and let you see. said a little bit earlier this morning was the king's coronation in the uk king charles iii and uh, watched by millions in the uk no doubt but i'm just wondering about you uh, leave me a note and open the comments below did you see the coronation and let me know if you're a british citizen uh, either living in britain or if you're living abroad or let me know if you're an overseas citizen i'm really interested to know how many people on this channel actually observed the the, uh, the pomp and pageantry of our King's coronation this morning. I know there's an awful lot of people in Australia who probably did. There's an awful lot of my American viewers who probably did. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know if you actually saw it and what you thought of it. What you think of our pomp and circumstance and our traditional sort of um, history. Drop a note before, below. 
Well, I'm hoping it's not too windy on the uh, on the the audio in this. I do apologise if it is. I've got my little uh, Rode Video Micro uh, microphone on with the dead cat attached. So hopefully it's stopped a lot of the wind, but it is quite breezy out here. Again, if it's too windy, let me know in the comments below. It never ceases to amaze me what you find just lying on the beach when you're just walking along. Why is there a lobster basket in the middle of the beach when there's nothing for the rest of the beach there? Has it just been washed up? Does it have a really interesting history or was it just dumped by somebody? I'd love to know. Now one thing I have discovered as I've been walking along using this uh, EM1 Mark 1 is I use the spirit level gauges in my cameras a lot. I tend to have a natural shooting style which puts me off to about four or five degrees off from the uh, from the vertical and it's something I've had all the time I've been taking photographs I have to take real care over it and uh, I find using the spirit levels to be well essential in a lot of my shots um, interesting thing is though because I've got the horizon at the back the horizon has got to be level it really has at least from this distance to where it is and uh, I'm Find that my spirit level in the camera is slightly out. So I'm going to have to recalibrate the spirit level when I get back to see if I can get it right. Something I've never really had to worry about in the past, but it's very noticeable on this. About one marker out um, to the, the right. I've got to keep on putting the camera down to the right slightly to get it straight. That's been a useful little tool to, uh, to come across in this journey, if nothing else. Now, as I just said about the coronation a few moments ago, I asked you to leave comments if you saw it, but if you did see it, or even if you didn't see it, what were you doing today? Were you one of those people out having a street party? Did you watch it on TV at home? Did you go out into one of those uh, big fields where they put huge TV screens for the public to watch them? I know there was one in Carlisle at uh, Bits Park uh, that the City Council had put out for people to be able to see the coronation. Leave me a comment below, so let me know what you did for the coronation, if you did anything at all. Well, I found the way that nature works is fascinating. We've had cold weather in the last couple of days, but we've now got a bit of sunshine. And where there's water behind me, just flowing down to, from the cliffs to the sea, we've got condensation coming off. It's starting to steam off the surface just because we've got a bit of heat in the sunlight. Fascinating the way that happens. That's going to be the clouds over somewhere in a, in a, in a few hours' time. And all we see is it disappearing from this beach in Filey now. There's just no way I can keep my hair smooth and down, but never mind. I'm sure you can live with that. Between the hair sticking up and the teeth being missing, it's it's fun. Now, before I go any further, if you're not a subscriber to this channel, why not? It's free. Hit the subscribe button below if you would. It really does help the channel. And hit the uh, tick the little uh, all box after you've hit the bell. And also, if you can give me a big thumbs up for this video, it really does help YouTube to spread the videos around more and more. If you would like to help support the channel, there are two ways that you can do it. One. If you look below, there's two little links. First one is a link to um, a PayPal if you want to give, buy me a cup of coffee to help support the channel. And the other one is if you'd like to become a, a patron of the channel, there's, uh, there's a tick box below. And all these wonderful people are patrons of the channel as well. That really does help and support us because you don't make much from YouTube and it just helps cover some of the costs. So all of those who have helped, thank you very much. It really is appreciated. Ah, please, you're enjoying the videos. Anyway, let's get back to having a wander down the beach. Do you know this is so typical of the English weather? English especially, I think, more than a lot of the other uh, countries in the, in the Union. Insofar as how quickly it changes, it's unbelievable. A few moments ago I was telling you how cold it was. Then I was showing you the uh, water evaporating from the... Uh, from the, the, the beach and now it's actually quite pleasant and warm that's in the space of five minutes no more than that this country really doesn't know what it wants to do weather wise but it does keep you on your toes you know one of the big advantages of having something like the em1 mark one is it's a professional grade camera it was superb in its day it was a top of the range olympus camera in its day and it's still a fantastic performer there's a, a video to my em1 mark one review up, up ahead up above um, but the beauty is they are so inexpensive now for what quarter of the price less than a quarter of a price is something like um, um, a G9 um, I'm not even sure what it is probably an eighth of the price of, a, of an OM1 you get a camera which can really perform well but I'm not advocating that you do get it covered in sand if I was to, dro was to drop this in sand it wouldn't be a huge loss it's something I can actually go out and enjoy myself with, with without having to panic all the time in case it gets damaged. And that really is a bit of a comfort. So if you are an adventurous photographer or you're just somebody who likes going into places where 
you might get sand or rain or something on it. Something like a, a used AM1 Mark 1 is a really good idea. It's got all the weatherproofing, admittedly this lens doesn't, but the AM1 Mark 1 has all the weatherproofing that was needed at the time to make it a professional camera. But it gives you the ability to spend, what, about 250 pounds on a really good camera. And if you do lose it, if you do break it, it's not cheap, but it's expendable. What I wouldn't necessarily suggest, of course, is swapping lenses all the time when you're on the beach. That could be pushing things a little bit too far. So I hope you enjoyed that little soiree along the breach at uh, Primrose Valley with me there. Interesting time taking the uh, AM1 Mark 1 with me. Um, Considered it's the same age as the GX7 that I did a week or two back, and there's a link to that video above. They are so, so different as cameras. The GX7 feels like a, a snapshot sort of camera. The G, the AM1 Mark I does feel like a professional um, mirrorless SLR camera. It's amazing the difference in them. Even though they came out and got similar performance and very, very similar sort of um, sensors and characteristics, they feel a very, very different camera. Again, if you shoot with either of those cameras, let me know in the comments below. But until the next time, keep on taking your camera out and keep on having fun with your photography. See you soon. Bye-bye.